Hey yo, speed my rants and gems. Speed my rants and gems. gems. Yeah, I can do it. We uh, discover uh, peace to uh, all the kings and the queens uh, where the mother lie. Speed my rants and gems. Speed my rants and gems. gems. Yeah, I can do it. We uh, discover uh, peace to all the kings uh, and the queens where the mother lie. So look, we got an amazing episode today. Yes. We got my man Henry Washington coming from Arkansas. Uh, uh, I love uh, what did they say? Ar- Arkansas. Arkansas, Arkansas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love Henry. Yeah, Henry's you cool. You know, Henry's cool, cool. He's a cool dude, and you know, you know, he's out here. He's doing his thing mm-hmm. in his market, and he promotes generational wealth. He promotes Absolutely. owning your real estate. So he's a good guy. Look, he's a get, good, great guy, and his story is so relatable because he started with his first deal. His wife borrowed from the 401k, and it took from that one deal to now 68, 69 doors later. In a short period of time, only in a few years, he's been able to achieve this. But you know what I was going to, I have to touch on this. Mm-hmm. See, your woman. Oh, talk to him. Your woman's going to be your rib. You know, your woman's going to always hold you down. Your wife. Your wife took him, his wife took him to 68 doors. You guys remember that. Move forward. Period? Period. <laughs> That's all we got to say to that one. We can now go to commercial break. Shout out to our sponsor, Andre. We appreciate y'all. We're going to bring Henry in right after this commercial break. And shout out to all the wives out there. Peace. Peace. All right, so today's episode is sponsored by Andre Barad of Yes to Real Estate and based in Houston, Texas. Listen, Andre's my guy. Um, he's a realtor, investor, developer of residential real estate. He's on track to close about $20 million in real estate. So if you're a real estate agent, you know $20 million, especially in the market like Houston, Texas, is not an easy thing, all right? Um, Andre and the Yes to Real Estate team, they do deals every single day. They're working with hardworking folks and turn them into successful investors. New builds, townhomes, fix and flips, commercial properties, they do it all. So if you're looking to buy real estate in the Houston, Texas market, make sure you hit up Andre Barad and his team. Go to yestorealestateteam.com for more information. All right, guys, so we back from commercial break. Shout out to our sponsor, Andre. We really appreciate the support. But we are back here with our special guest. We got Mr. Henry Washington from Arkansas in the building. What's going on, my brother? What's good, man? I appreciate you having me, man. This is this is fly what y'all got going here, man. Look, man. Shout out to Rants and Gems. This is what we do. This is what we do. You know, this is top tier, man. This is impressive. Well, we're not playing around, brother. There's no jokes in here. I told you, top tier. There's no jokes in here. It's first class. (laughs) I appreciate. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. So look. You're from Arkansas, but let's first start off this interview with, when did you fall in love oh, man. with real estate? Man, first deal. Mm-hmm. First deal I knew that this was, this was something that I was going to take and make it big. And so when you think about before I got started in real estate, I still got it. I wrote down all my goals, right? I had my goals in a little notebook. And I had made a decision before I even knew how I was going to invest in real estate that I was going to be good at it, right? It's going to work or it's going to work, right? And so I wrote down all these goals but I didn't know what I didn't know. And so my goal was to do like buy five houses over the next five years. So that's what I had written down. And when I did my first deal, man, I did, I bought a single family home and I didn't have any money, I had bad credit, right? So like how I got there, I had to fix my credit Mm -hmm. and then I had to figure out how I'm gonna buy this deal, right? And the way it came to me was a buddy of mine was in a tough spot. He said, man, I got a house, I gotta sell it in 30 days. He was like, I'm not even trying to make a huge profit. I need this amount of money to go do my next deal. He was like, if I can sell it to you for this, you can have it. So he was going to sell it to me for 115 It was worth 150 And mm. so I was like, all right, I'll find the money. And I didn't know how to do it. I ended up networking with some other investors. And they helped me figure out that I could take a loan out against the 401k. Now, I didn't have no money. I wasn't smart enough to have a 401k back then. But my wife did. Mm. And so she was gracious. Shout out to, to let wife. me right, man. I wouldn't it's be always the literally wife. wouldn't be here without her, right? Mm. And she mm. helped me get that first deal. And so we took a loan out against the four hundred one K. We uh we then took that money, nineteen grand. I had a thousand, so I did have I had one thousand. <laughs> we needed nineteen. I borrowed nineteen from the four hundred one K. We bought the property, <laughs> right? And then it immediately started cash flowing because we raised the rent on the tenant that was in there. And then like 
90 days before that, I didn't know what I was going to do. I literally had a panic attack because I was trying to figure out how I was going to make more money. And so to go from panicking about how I'm going to take care of my family to owning a property that was cash flowing, then not using my own money to buy it, right? Even though it was 401k money, what money are you going to touch till retirement, right? It's yeah. like monopoly money, right? And now we own this cash flowing asset. And then the bank I bought the deal with came to me and they were like, hey, do you want to take out a line of credit on mm -hmm. equity in the property? And you can use that for your down payment for your next deal. I was like, I, yeah. <laughs> right? Absolutely. And so to go from, to go from panicking to having a deal, to having a line of credit for like, it was almost $30,000, mm -hmm. right? Like just that feeling of like, oh, wait a minute. Like I figured it out. I know how I'm gonna take care of my family. And so we like crossed out that goal. Yeah. And we went, I, we did five deals that month. That's amazing. Yeah. Not, all right, so your first deal is what made you fall in love with real estate. That's right. And your wife facilitated the transaction. That's right, that's right, absolutely. It's man. the wife for me. It's that's the wife. Right. You know. She was, she was with that. it from day one, man. I didn't have to convince her to get into real estate. I just, she was, she had my back from day one. She trusted me even though, you know, I didn't have the plan, the full laid out plan mm -hmm. uh, when I got started. I just knew I was gonna make it work. So, I love that. that first deal helped you, and that was a single family or multifamily? It was a single. That was a single family. Yeah. All right. So first... Shout out to the single families because we get a bad rap. <laughs> right. That's but right. Single, That's but see, right. single family, they still you see how she jumped they up, generate yeah. a revenue. That's right. They Let generate. me sit up. I probably, I probably bought 10 to 12 doors mm -hmm. off of that one door from having that line of credit and just either doing a burr or doing a, a flip. So Wait. let's let's go through this motion, yeah. right? Yeah. So you got the first house. It has some equity in it. You yeah. pulled out a home equity line of credit. That's right. All right, and then you purchased another single family? I did a flip. You did a flip. Yep. All right, so you did a flip, and, and you're based in Arkansas. That's right. First of all, before we get into this, how is the market How is the market out there? Because I don't know nobody but you from yeah, Arkansas. Me neither. Yeah. Like, I just like, never think about no Arkansas. No one talks about the Arkansas, Arkansas real estate market, so yeah, yeah. why don't you tell our audience, before we get into your personal deals, yeah. about that market and what's really happening out there? Yeah, Arkansas is a great market, man. It's, a, it's an undervalued market because we got such huge corporations that are headquartered out there. Walmart's headquartered in Bentonville, Arkansas. Mm. You got Tyson Foods, right? T Tyson Chicken, everybody know Tyson mm. Chicken. They're headquartered mm. in, Benton in uh, Springdale, Arkansas. You got J.B. Hunt Transportation, right? Logistics is the key to everything, all Facts. business, right? And so you got them out there. And so they, they are international companies. And so they bring people from all over the world to come live and work in this Northwest Arkansas market. And so what that makes from a real estate perspective is, you still have low entry points because it's Arkansas, right? Mm -hmm. And so the cost to buy is substantially low compared to other markets in the U.S., but you get high rents because you got people from all over the world that come to Arkansas, but they don't want to stay, right? They don't want to live there forever because <laughs> it's Arkansas. So they rent, and they're corporate, and they make a lot of money, so they're paying high rents. And so you can buy low, rent high, and uh, it's, 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 it creates because it's like unicorn market, man. So you guys are a cash flow state in Arkansas. That's, right. That's good to hear. So not an equity market. A huge equity too, man. The mm. equity. So you got the, the best of both worlds the out there. Best of both worlds right now. The equity's it, been huge. Is there more multifamilies in your market or or singles? There's lots of singles, but there's there's also lots of multi, small multis. Duplexes. Now, right now, right now, there's lots of new construction A class apartments going up, and so that's creating some opportunity in the B and C class. Uh, in the B and C class area because the people that can't afford the A are going to live in these B and C class communities. Now, give us some zip codes. We zip codes, okay. zip codes over here. We love it. Yeah. You're talking about these B and C areas. What are these areas yeah. that our audience needs to start looking into and doing their due diligence on? 72764, 72762. Mm. Nice. Yeah. We like that. Thank and you. these are the opportunities where there's a lot of new A class apartments going up and the surrounding areas, That's which right. is now trickling down to these two right. zip codes. So the two zip codes mentioned. I gave you, so if you think of Northwest Arkansas, it's like four cities stacked on top of each other that make up the area, right? So you got Bentonville, Rogers, Springdale, Fayetteville. And everybody wants to live in Fayetteville because that's where the university is. And then Bentonville because that's where Walmart is headquartered, okay. right? And so that's where they're building a lot of these A-class apartments and lots of upscale living. And so that creates opportunity in the Springdale market, which is more of a working class area. That's where Tyson headquarters is. They got lots of chicken plants, lots of, lots of, uh, uh, blue collar type work and so you got people uh, filtering out of those areas and going to live someplace a little more affordable which is in Springdale and so it's created a great opportunity there. No that's right. awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So Arkansas 
is a equity and cash flow. So now you have, is there a lot of new investors hitting this market? There is, man. You've or got a lot of people. It's a lot of old money. It's, well, you've got a lot of old money that's in the market currently, but you also have a lot of uh, new money coming in from the New Yorks and the Californias because people, because the markets have been hot everywhere, people are selling, they're making tons of money on their sale, mm -hmm. but they don't want to pay their capital gains, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're 1031 ing into bigger, larger properties in the Arkansas markets or in other smaller niche markets like that. Like I sold a duplex, you talk about equity. I sold a duplex, I paid 135 for. I sold it about three months ago for three fifty. Hold on, how long ago did you buy? We yeah. can't just throw those yeah, numbers yeah. out without giving us yeah. the yeah. whole. Yeah. Yeah. When did it you all, buy brother? it? Yeah, I bought it in twenty late twenty nineteen. Good. It was Randy. It was a cash flow cow. I was I was getting twelve hundred a side out of it. Wow. And then um, I sold it for three to, for three fifty to some investors out of California who ten thirty one out of a sale, and they bought three fifty. It's not going to cash flow at three fifty. But they don't care because they, they don't have to pay them capital gains. 200K in two years, yeah. basically. So equity, cash flow, all of it. Damn. Wow. Yeah, man. That's crazy. It's a phenomenal that's market. So let's talk about the, the landlord tenant laws. Yeah. Right? Because oh, that's yeah. huge. We're in COVID, people ain't paying, they're taking yeah. advantage. How was the landlord, how was the eviction process pre COVID and yeah. now that we're in COVID? So Arkansas is a pretty uh, landlord friendly state. Love it. In general. And so, uh, me personally, I didn't have very many issues with people not paying. The people that I had that weren't paying weren't paying before COVID. <laughs> like they were inherited, inherited tenants that I had from when I bought properties. And so, um, the tenants that I that I had that did have issues communicated with me, and we were able to work out payment plans. And so, nobody I had no COVID evictions. That's that's, that's good. really that's good. That's amazing. No COVID How long does it take to evict? Uh, Three, three days. You only have to give people three day notice. What? Wow. Yeah. You guys are definitely landlord. landlord, landlord <laughs> yeah, I like North Carolina then. Yeah. yeah. So you, North you Carolina have to give people like that. You have to give them a three day. It's called a three day pay or quit. Um, and if they don't pay or move out within those three days, then you file the eviction. Now then from there, your lawyer takes over and it could probably take a week or so after that. But So mm -hmm. this can happen once you're 30 days late? Mm -hmm. It can happen once you... Three days late. Yeah, once you, so once you your payment's due on the first. If you give them a grace to the 10th, if they don't pay by the 13th, three days, boom, you can get them out. Three day notice. Wow. Damn. Mm -hmm. Well, so. there you have it. <laughs> you just found, <laughs> I just found the next area. That's what, that's what I was going to say. So, yeah. Three days. <laughs> so we Woo. know that you do a lot of investing. Um, tell us a little bit about how many doors you have and um, yeah. Like your selections, like what made you choose the properties that you have acquired? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So I've got 68 doors, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I'm uh, I, I kind of tell my students and I teach my students like if I have to pick a niche, I tell people I'm buy and hold. But what I learned early on in the process is that you know when you go to real estate meetups and when you talk to people. They typically say their biggest problem is, man, it's hard to find deals. You can't find deals, right? The market's crazy. How am I going to find these deals? And so to me, that said, well, if I can get good at that, I'll always have a way to make money because I'll always have a room full of people who want to buy deals. And so I built my business around being a deal finding business. So I basically work like a wholesaler. I just keep them. Mm. Can I ask you another question? Yeah. So how is the market in Arkansas in comparison to the rest of the country? You know, yeah. I keep up with the major cities. Everybody's yeah. in the seller's market, yeah. multiple offers, low inventory, high demand. Same. 100 percent the same. Okay. Right. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of demand for people who do move to the area. And then because what happens is they move to Arkansas and then they realize, man, it's not what I thought it was. I really like it here. Mm. And so they want to buy houses. But the inventory is low. And that's creating this opportunity where if you are in the business of finding deals that you can add value to, you can make money. And so we're flipping houses right now. We're not even doing full renovations on flips because I've just found this niche where I can provide a home. So let's say I buy a home that's valued at 200,000. Like I, I recently, I bought one, I bought a home valued at, it's probably valued at 250. I paid 140 for it. Now I could have spent 50 grand fixing it up and sold it for 270, but instead, I spent a few thousand dollars just cleaning it out and putting new floor coverings in, and I put it on the market for 200, and then it sold for 215. And so I made the same profit I would have made had I done a full renovation in a flip, but I made it in less than half the time. And then someone still bought a property in this crazy market that had equity in it. So they right. walked into a deal with equity. 
that they could then fix up and get even more equity. I made the same amount of profit, right? Everybody wins. That's a win-win for everybody. So if, um, what is the average um, price point in your area? Yeah, so like a typical three-bed, two-bath is going to run you, uh, three-bed, two-bath, 1,500 square feet. Right now, the purchase price will run you, depending on the neighborhood or city you're in, anywhere between 175 and 275. Okay. Yep. All right. So that's a that's a much better market than Atlanta. We're, yeah. Our average price point right now is 458. On a starter? Even our starter homes, yeah. 300. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, I like my market, man. I like my market. Yeah, I mean, look, you said you can evict people in three days. <laughs> I love your market too, right, right now. Right, that sounds yeah. crazy. So, what about Section 8, right? Yeah. How Section 8 in Arkansas? Yeah, so I don't have any Section 8 properties. I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I would, I, would, I would be happy to have some Section 8 properties. Um, but they don't pay as well as the market rents. And so, like, if you're going to do Section 8 in Arkansas, it really has to be your niche, right? Yeah. And like, like, that's not my niche. So I would be taking a cut most of the time on rents to do Section 8. It's not like we're some of the bigger cities where they pay yeah. above market for right. Section 8. It, it's not like that. Where well, I mean, look, if you have opportunities to kick people out in three days, yeah. paying, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you really don't we really need win. to take a pay cut. Correct. Yeah. Because if you don't pay, look, sayonara, you're getting out of here regardless. Right. By right. hook or right. crook, you're getting out of here. That's Correct. Right? right? It doesn't even matter. So... When it comes to just your market, generally speaking, and you are, he you said you're helping people purchase property. That's right. What are like some three easy, like three easy tips you can give someone that wants to invest in the Arkansas market? Yeah. Um, so what I, what I, what I, what I kind of tell people to do is when you think about real estate, one of the amazing things about real estate is that it's so flexible. There's so many ways to get in real estate, right? And there's a way for everybody, no matter your situation, to kind of get in the game. But what that does is it creates this place where people are like, well, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. And so um, my tips for anybody wanting to get into real estate, Arkansas or not, is you have to learn. The first thing you need to do is figure out what's a good deal in that market look like, right? Because as investors, we make money on the buy, right? We make money when we buy it, then we add value to it, and then we monetize that new value, right? Whether through rents, Airbnb, selling it, whatever, right? So learn what a good deal looks like in that market. So the way you can learn what a good deal looks like, especially in the Northwest Arkansas market, is you get in and around other investors in that area. And you can do that virtually now, right? There's lots of real estate investor meetups. They're still meeting virtually. So if you want to invest from out of state, you can virtually attend some of these meetings. There's Facebook groups, right? Anywhere there's investors having a conversation about property in Arkansas, you need to be in that room and in those conversations, and then go just talk to people. Go talk to, the, you'll know who the people in the room are who are doing the deals, right? Yeah. Go find that person and start, ask them. Say, hey man, tell me about your last deal. What'd you do with it? How'd you find it? Did you flip it? Did you rent it, right? How much did you put into it? And we love talking about our deals, right? Like Facts. investors love talking about their deals. Yeah. And so you're doing two things when you do that. You're building rapport with somebody who's a mover and a shaker, right? People love talking about themselves, right? So now they're going to remember you, but you're getting information, right? He's going to tell you, or he or she's going to tell you, well, this is where I bought it, right? So now you know the neighborhood. Now you know what they purchased it for. Now you know how much mm -hmm. they put into it. Now you know how much the rent go for in that area, right? You've got all this information. So be taking your notes. Do that over and over again. You start to understand what a good deal looks like in that area. If you don't want to get out and get in front of people, you can do, like, you can go on Zillow or PropStream if you have a paid PropStream account, and you can pull comps in that area, right, and look at solds, right? So pick a neighborhood that you might be interested in and just filter for solds in the last six months, in the last year, and look for all the price points that things sold for, and then look for the lowest value, right, the lowest dollar price that it sold for, and then see if maybe that was an LLC, right? And if it was an LLC, chances are it might have been an investor. And so then you can skip trace that investor. You can call them and you can say, hey, I see you got some properties in this area. Man, why, can we go to lunch and talk about, talk about real estate? And so now you're networking and you're seeing kind of what investors are paying for property in those neighborhoods. So you kind of get a sense of what a, what a deal looks like in those areas. That's a gem. That's a big gem because it's always about knowing the market that, you're, right. that you want to invest in first because every That's market right. is different, which brings me to this. Yep. So I have a really big question. Yep. How is the... Um, Airbnb corporate rental market in yeah. Arkansas. No question. Because yeah. that market is, I mean, for other places, it's, you know, yeah. I, speaking for myself, the Atlanta market has been good to me on my Airbnb. Yeah. It's only been, it's only been almost four weeks. So tell me, how was that market? Because a lot of people want to take advantage of that as well. Fantastic. Really? Fantastic. Here's why. There's two reasons. Um, 
the area I'm at is more of a tourist destination than people think that it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's huge in the mountain biking industry. It's huge in the outdoor hiking, camping industry, mm -hmm. right? Like, so people can literally come from all over the world to, to bike the trails in Northwest Arkansas. Wow. I never right? thought about Me that. Either. And, it's, and then you've got the University of Arkansas, right? So you've got the football team, the football, it's a, there's no pro teams. And so the, the college the football team. team is the pro yeah. team, right? And so people come from all over to go to the football games during football season. And those stadiums right. hold 100K, easy. And the, and the real jam is, if you want to do Airbnb, there's no really nice hotels. There's oh. your normal, you know, extended stays. And, yeah, right, yeah, right. usual suspects. You, if you want a decent hotel, like, there's just not many. And so they're going to book up fast. And so people want to stay in nice places. Mm. And so that creates this opportunity for Airbnb. Wow. So is... Are people, are investors, Airbnb and their multifamilies also out there? I'm turning the duplex into two Airbnbs right now. So I was getting a thousand dollars out of one side mm -hmm. for rent and eleven 1 hundred out of the other side. So for twenty, rent. what's that? Twenty one hundred. Twenty one hundred a month. Um, projected to do, we're going to list at one hundred and twenty five dollars a night, and we're going to we're going to uh, we're shooting for fifteen to twenty days a month. That's about what we're calling a, a full month. Yeah. So, right, so twenty I'll, days, you're probably yeah. going to get about twenty two hundred. Yeah. Per door now. Per door now. Right. So you just so double, you double just doubled it. up. I'll double it. Mm -hmm. And how much is this duplex? And that's, and that's on a fifteen to twenty day month. Uh, I paid one seventy five. So you got a mortgage payment of zero, basically. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> yeah. right. Basically zero. One seventy five. And how much are the property taxes in Arkansas expensive? Cheap. Cheap too. Cheap. How, what about insurance? Cheap. It's all yeah. cheap, man. I, like on that duplex, I probably pay. Uh, probably cost me about twelve hundred for the year. For wow. the year, or the month, for the no, nah, twelve hundred for the year in insurance, twelve to fifteen hundred for the year in insurance, and uh, taxes are probably close to two grand. Damn, year. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the fuck. No, listen, it's, that's <laughs> yeah. better than Atlanta, and I know yeah. we, you know, we we used to be yeah. the most affordable. <laughs> Not no more. Not yeah. anymore. Y'all Wakanda now. <laughs> Y'all got a new name, Wakanda. Right. It's expensive over here. It's very expensive. Damn, it's expensive. So breathing. the property taxes on a duplex is two thousand yeah. dollars. That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. And you're paying a hundred and something thousand. Yeah, I paid I paid one seventy five, but what we did, so what I like to do with my duplexes, especially if they only have one car garages, is I turn the garage into a bedroom. Because what I noticed is with my duplexes or with my multifamilies, if they have garages, people either just store stuff in there mm -hmm. or they move somebody in it anyway. Yeah. And so now I'm not getting paid for that extra square footage. So now I turn that into heated and cooled square footage and I fully convert it, I make it look nice, it looks just like a regular bedroom. And then I get, so I buy them cheaper because I'm buying a 2-1 or a 2-2 and I turn them into 3-1s and 3-2s. And so I get more rent. Um, and it might cost me, you know, it may cost me four or five grand to convert a garage, but I make that up in rents in a few months. Yeah. I'm glad you said rent. that. Smart. Because that's very smart. So yeah. that leads me to my next question, yeah. contractors. Yeah. Do you know how many people want to invest? Oof. And everybody's like, I want to invest, but contractors are really hard to come by. Oof. So. With you, you know, and if you're speaking to someone that's not as experienced, yeah. what are some things they want to look for in finding a good team of contractors Man. to make sure they can get their properties, um, you know, just appropriately um, repaired and re you know renovated for their next tenant? That is the hardest part about this business, yeah. and that's what I t and people don't often don't think about that until it's time. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. Because everybody like everybody's like, go find the deal, right? Figure out how much money you're gonna make. Yeah. People aren't thinking about well now. I actually got to now. I got to repair work, it, yeah. right? Or they plan on doing it themselves, and they only want to do that one time because <laughs> people, yeah. people don't want to be stuck fixing up the property. And so, man, I got all the same horror stories everybody else got. Man, I've, <laughs> I've had people run off with my money. Man, yeah. uh, but yeah. can you tell but, that story? Because but, you know what, we want to educate. We want to yeah. educate our audience. Like, how did that happen to you, and what can you do to prevent it from happening? Hundred percent. So, we. Uh, we employed a guy to do some work on the property who we didn't vet properly, right? I went and only saw one job that he did. I didn't go see multiple jobs that he had done in the past. And I was a newbie myself, so I really didn't know fully what I was looking at. It was like, yeah, it looks good, right? But it probably wasn't that good. Right? Based on what he did for us, it probably wasn't that good. Yeah. And so, um, and then we paid him up front for some work that he didn't show up for it and do, right? And, uh, you know, we, 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 we wrote him a check, but we couldn't cancel the check in time, and so, you know, we lost that money. And what I, what what that taught me to do was a couple of things: is, is um, I pull up on contractors now, right? If I see dumpsters, 
right? If I see people doing work, I pull up, I talk to them, I see the kind of work that they're doing, and if they're open to having you walk through some their project while they're there when they weren't expecting you, and they'll show you that kind of work, then they'll, that, that, to me that says they're, they're willing to stand by their work. Yeah. Right. I also ask them, can you send me some addresses of some other jobs you've got going on, right? And if they're willing to give me those addresses and not have to meet me there, just let me pop up whenever I feel like it and look at the work. They stand by their they work. They stand by their work. That, you know, if you sh and if you show up to jobs like that and the work site is filthy and people ain't really working, yes. right, it says a lot about who you're going to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. I communicate with them the way I like to be communicated with. And so if I'm texting a contractor and they're not answering text messages or text them forever chances are they're probably busy and if that's the way they're communicating with me then chances are I'm gonna have a problem when I need them for them to communicate with me and so um, I like to find contractors who are willing to let you see they work on your terms and um, I like to do scopes of work now and so I'll do very very high level scopes of work okay. before I get a project and I'll send it out to two or three contractors that I'm gonna bid and so they know the size of the pie ahead of time. Because a lot of time, good contractors are typically busy. They don't want to do work that's not going to be a benefit to them, right? Right. And so I've wasted a lot of time having contractors come out and walk at a job and go, man, this ain't for me. This isn't worth my time. Or, hey, this is too big for me. Right? Oh, I'm not yeah. built for this, right? And so um, we alleviate that by I do high level. I just do each room. And I do high level what I want to do. I want the room painted this color. I want the trim painted this color. I want this wall gone. I want, you know, the bathroom this tile. I want a backsplash this color in the kitchen. Right. I just high level put all that on there and I'll send it to them so they know room by room what they're going to be doing ahead of time. And so a lot of the times they'll just either tell me, hey, yeah, I don't want to come bid this or this is too big for me before they even show up. And then when they show up, they're prepared to give me a bid because they've looked at everything already like I get less turnaround time on getting those bids. That's yeah. a really big yeah, that's deal. A that's a gem. Let me yeah. ask you something just to go a little deeper into that because yep. I you know I'm always thinking deeper and deeper. Yeah. It's the agent in me. Do you send like a house rendering over or do you just send them a list? No I just send them a list. I don't okay. send the house rendering. Um, uh, I might send the uh, if I've got like a, a floor the, plan, the floor plan Somewhere. from the, like a floor plan, just yeah. so they kind of know what they're getting mm -hmm. into. I think this is a big gym, especially yeah. for our like early investors. So they're not wasting contractors Absolutely. time yeah. and contractors can know that you respect their time and that's vice right. versa. That's right. Are you putting the square footage of each room? Uh, in that scope too? No, like the no. master is 400 square feet? No, I'll room. give them all the stats of the house as a whole. Okay. And I typically don't put the, uh, the square footage of each room. Um, but I like them to know, you know, I want them to know when they get the bid, this is probably, because they can eyeball it. They can go, this is probably a thirty, forty thousand dollar $40,000 job, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is something I want to look at. Yeah. And then, they, like I said, they're prepared and can turn around the bid faster because a lot of the time you spend with contractors is chasing them down for the bid you had them show up for. Correct. No, right. they take forever yeah. sometimes to give yeah. you a scope of work. But it's I think like, this is going to change the game. This That's is going right. to change the game for a lot of people. Absolutely. It's like, do your own part. Like, yeah. tell them what you want, and now if, come out. And if you're prepared, and you show yourself as prepared and they still want to work with you, right? That makes for a good relationship because if you walk in there and you don't know what you're talking about and you don't know that you're prepared and they end up working with you, maybe they feel like they're working with you because they can work you over, right? Mm. And so now everybody's on the same page. I know what I want. I know what I'm looking for. You knew what you wanted. You gave me my information in a timely manner, right? That says a lot for me about what kind of relationship we're going to have moving forward, mm -hmm. right? I also had to learn not to be scared to pay for bids, right? Some people, uh, don't want to pay somebody to come yeah. out just to give you a bid. Uh, I'm okay paying you a couple hundred dollars to come out and give me a bid, Absolutely. right? Because then now, now I'm not just asking for a free bid. I expect something more professional. Absolutely. I expect something quicker, right? And you should be able to turn that around to me quicker. And, and if more they don't, then you already don't, know. Then you know I'm not messing with them yeah. no more. And yeah, I paid two hundred dollars for a bid for somebody I'm not going to use. Me but thousands. how much did that save? Yeah. Ooh. How much did that save? Jim. No, right. that's that's smart as hell. You yeah. know is. I like contractors actually yeah. personally yeah. who won't go out for free. Yeah. They value yeah. their you time. They value your time. They value right. their time. So when I automatically get that, I'm like, oh, okay, this person's serious. Because anybody, yeah. these other jokers are just like, oh, I'll show up tomorrow. And, and who they do, you, do. Who do you want managing your $70,000 job? A guy that, that charged you for his time and gave you a professional bid? Mm -hmm. Or somebody that showed up writing on a napkin, right, and took you two, two weeks to turn around a bid to you? Yeah, no. Yeah. I want the other one. <laughs> no, 100%. 100%. Yeah. I, mean, right, I think that's, right, right. that's that's a gem in itself. But 
Let me ask you this. So now you're dealing with all these properties. You're doing a lot of rehabs. How are you saving money? Because you know everything's expensive right now. Yeah. And as an investor, you you want trying to cut everything that you can. But oh, still, I see him scratching that hand now. Deliver a good man, product. They can right? give away all my secrets, Look, man. Bro, man everybody knows rent, my market this is now. What the they know what's good in the market. Market. They know. They know. They're gonna come to you first. So I mean, we want to know everything. We're the king of Arkansas. We're about to have Arkansas. Man, that's why I'm sweating in here. Matt got me. You the king of Arkansas. Matt got me telling all the secrets. Let's go. Matt, how you saving money, bro? We need to know. Man, I'm not paying money to buy properties, Matt. Mm. No. Okay. Man. No, man, it takes money to buy real estate. It just doesn't have to be yours. Mm. And so I've leveraged the bank. OPM. I've leveraged the bank's money to buy my freedom. So that's what I do. I use small local banks. I've built relationships with banks, and I'm um, meticulous about my approach with the banks, and that helps me get optimal financing. And I've been able to figure out ways to where I can buy deals and I don't have to bring any of my own money, right? And a lot of people don't realize these small local banks is they need business Absolutely. from small local businesses, from Absolutely. small local investors because they can't not, survive. Without they can't it. survive just doing thirty-year fixed-rate mortgages for first-time home buyers. The yeah. big, the big banks got that unlocked. Yeah, right. And so these portfolio lenders. Um, they're called portfolio lenders because they keep all their loans in their in-house portfolio. Mm -hmm. And they're small local banks, which means they typically have a loan committee of other business yep. professionals in the area who approve these loans. But yep. because they're not going to turn around and sell these loans to Fetty, Freddie and Fannie, mm -hmm. they don't have to have the same strict underwriting, guidelines. underwriting guidelines, right? And so they can be more flexible. And they want to work with people who they feel like are going to bring them safe good deals to invest in, mm -hmm. right? And so like I said, I made my business about finding good deals. And so now I'm able to take them a good deal and I have a track record of other good deals to show them and then I can I can basically ask for what I want and I put it on them to tell me why they can or can't do it, right? I think a lot of us sometimes we go to these banks um, you know, hat in hand, especially black folks, right? We go to the bank. Yeah, hat like we have, like we're begging Please, them to sir, give us can I money. Have some of your money, sir? Yeah, but we're right. overly qualified but for overly the loan. Overly qualified, Absolutely. and you need to get this. You interest. need me. You're yes. a service-based business. Yeah, you need to provide the service more than I need you. That's other use. One hundred percent. Right, and so I teach people like. If you've ever done a deal, no matter if you're house hacking, that's a deal, right? Like mm -hmm. whatever you're doing deal wise, you need to track it. I track mine in a little PowerPoint portfolio. It's just a picture of the house, the purchase price, what I put into it for rehab, what I either rented or sold it for. And then if I had investors, what I ended up paying my investors, right? And I have one slide for every deal that I've done. And when I walk into a bank, I don't walk into a bank conceptually. I'm not walking into a bank saying, hey, I'm an investor, I'm gonna be looking at buying some properties, you know, what kind of terms can you give me? They hear that all day long. Yeah. I walk into a bank and I say, look, I've got 123 Main Street under contract, I'm buying it for 100,000, I'm gonna put 25,000 into it, I'm gonna sell it for 200,000 when I'm done with it, or $225,000 when I'm done with it. I'm looking for a loan on a 20 to 25 year amortization at three and a half to four and a half percent interest rate on a three year adjustable rate term and I want to put less than 10% down. Is that something you can do for me? Mm. And by the way, this is my 69th property. This is my 10th deal this year. Here's my portfolio. You can see everything that I've done. And I bring it with me. And when they ask me for, you know, because then they want to send you, well, yeah. I'm going to need your bank statements because yeah. they think you got to go on your way. I'm like, yeah, here. Here you go. That's right here. I'm yeah. ready to go. You got your your I'm package to together. Go. Wait a minute. You're together. We have to do. Let's let's recap this because you know I'm always always going to break freak, it down. I'm gonna take a drink to you that. Go, you go. That was a yeah. Gym. That's a gym. Being organized. And I want right. being organized. So when you're looking to go to these banks, you you want to have your portfolio together. That's right. You want to tell them what terms you want. That's, yes. And let's be proactive. You already have your bank statements printed and ready to go. It's already bank in the folder. LLC. What the LLC documents. LLC documents. Everything. Mm -hmm. And the key to this is. All on top of that, I'm showing you what I've already done. Here's some photos. Yeah. So you know that you're working with someone that finishes the Here, job. And right. here's the addresses. You can right. Google and see it for yourself. The, 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 what, Cross reference. What opened my eyes to that, Matt, because I, I didn't come by that process by accident. The first time I walked into a bank to get a, to get a loan on a deal is I went and I had the deal under contract. And again, I didn't know what I was doing fully. And I was like, well, now I got this deal. I got to find the money. So I walked into a bank. I just walked in. I, I didn't have all my, I just had my contract. 
And I said, I need to speak to somebody who does uh, your commercial loans. And they were like, all right, all right, bro. Right. And so they sent me around and finally somebody came out and I said, hey, look, I'm buying 123 Main Street down here and I'm paying 50 grand for it. I'm looking to see what kind of loan products that you have. And my man, he was like, oh, you're, you're buying it now? And I was like, yeah, I'm buying it. I got the contract. And I pulled the contract out and gave it uh -huh. to him. And he goes, you, you know this is in Fayetteville, right? I said, yeah. He said, you know this is worth 150000 I said, yeah. He's like, but you're only paying fifty. I said, yeah. What can you do for me? And he was like, I'll be right back. He came back. He had options for me. He was like, he was ready to go. And I realized that's because I walked in there with something for him to work Substance. with. And it was a good deal. You and wasn't he was a, like, I, I'm going to tell you what happened because yeah. yeah. I'm a banker. Yeah. You wasn't a piker coming through. Right. <laughs> wishful thinking. Like, right, hey, right, I right. want to do this. I want to do this. It was more so like, hey, yeah. I am doing this. I am prepared. What can you do for me? So anybody that's sitting in the loan officer's chair at that moment yeah. is going to take you serious right. and say, you know what? You're getting a great deal. These are the products that I have for you. But mm -hmm. what I like of what you're saying is, and I think this is phenomenal conversation, FYI, yeah. because I tell people they got to start leveraging smaller and regional banks. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. And it's cheat code, man. It, it is the 100% cheat code because mm -hmm. the smaller and regional players will do things that the big boys won't do. Yeah. And I think the most important thing that you said was that you have to go in there and ask for commercial loans. Even if you're buying residential That's property, right. because when you're doing residential investments under LLCs, they are underwritten like commercial properties. As long right. as you have good deals and you understand commercial financing, they're going to underwrite that right. all day long, especially to an investor who's buying multiple properties and has a current portfolio and you have that experience. So that's a major gem right there. Huge that gem. people, I've been saying this shit for almost four years online, right. and no one's paying no attention. No one wants to listen. No I hope they're listening. listening today. I hope they're listening today. I mean, I, I, I broke it down for you guys. Yeah. That's a gem. He broke it down. That's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's a huge, huge gem, just being ready. Because these local banks have the money to lend. And they need and to give it to They them. have to give it to or local people or they're going to go out of business. They and need people don't understand there are quotas yeah. that they have to meet. And if they're not, and these guys, they don't have 100, 200, 5,000 loan right. officers. Right? They, may like have, couple, two, three. they may have like three, four. You have, you have if to that. put yourself in the mind of that banker, right? If you know, okay, I know these banks got this money, they have to give it away to investors, why would they give it to me, right? Right. Well, they're mm -hmm. going to give it to you because you're going to bring them something that they feel like they can't lose with. And you're organized and you came with the deal, of course they're going to choose you over somebody else, right? If I, that that $200,000 valued house or that $150,000 valued land that I was buying for, the uh, lot that I was buying for 50, right? He was thinking, yeah, we want to finance this deal. Because even if this dude, we don't know, forecloses, forecloses on this we deal, win. we win it. We right? want you We're to making foreclose. way more money yeah. if we right. sell that on our own. We than want you to foreclose. The little interest he's paying with me, yeah. yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. They want you to foreclose. Yeah. That's good. I can tell you, it's, it's so confident in here because a lot of people get afraid of debt. They're afraid of yeah. debt. They're afraid of debt because they're using debt the wrong way. Correct. Right. So I think debt going to ball out at the Louis Vuitton store, that's, that, that's yeah. negative debt. Correct. But positive debt, yep. if you're going to go buy an asset, add value to it, know your plan, understand your exit strategy, turn it into a cash loan property, Airbnb, or even flip it, that's, right. that's positive debt. It's a tool. And so it's a tool you're using to build wealth and you're using other people's money while every time you make a profit, you're putting that money into an account that they can see is padded up, which makes the bank want to give you more money. 100%. I've used the bank's money to buy my freedom. That's it. I use the bank's money to buy my freedom. Let's cheers to that. Hell yeah. That's a chip. That's, right a, that's a gem. That's a fucking chip. That's a gem. <laughs> <laughs> I use we the made bank's it. money to buy my freedom. Though. Right. Correct. That is a freaking gem, and you're doing it, and people don't think you can do it. Look, you're out here. Again, you can buy money, buy real estate with no money. Yes. You can use OPM, yep. but you have to have the experience. Yep. You have to know exactly what you're doing to accomplish this. It's not that difficult. It can happen. That's right. But the most important thing is the relationship with the bank. That's right. Right? Build the relationship. Build the relationship. And, and, and these banks, they literally have accounts to go spend money networking with people in the community so that they Correct. can get loans with them. So if you call them 
And just call them and say, hey, I'm a local investor. I'd love to go to lunch with your commercial loan officer or your commercial loan VP. Right? They have budgets for that. Correct. They do that. So that they're like ready to do They're that. ready yeah. to sit down and They have to, to spend yeah. money on lunches. Right. But yeah. don't just go to lunch and get give the them information. The, and yeah. give them the, hey, I'm, I'm looking. I'm probably going to be buying something. Go, go with, I went with my binder. This is what I've done. These are the kinds of deals I'm doing. This is ones I've got under contract right now, mm -hmm. right? And and they what they really want too is your deposits, right? Correct. And so and so if you can go there and you can say, look, I'm looking for a relationship. I'm looking for a partner in my business. I'm willing to bring you my deposits if you can give me favorable loan loan terms. Correct. Right? Don't just you know give give all your 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 uh, give all your leverage to them by giving them all your deposits on the front side. Um, if they're not going to give you the tone, the, the loan terms that you want, right? right. So the, the loan terms that I have established with my bank right now, um, the one I'm mainly using, is they loan to me at 75% of the ARV. So yeah. basically, if I bring a deal to them, no matter how much money I need, if it's under 75% of the after repair value, mm -hmm. I don't have to bring any money to the table. And so if I'm buying a $100,000 home, right, that, if I'm buying a home that's ARV at 100000 and I'm buying it for 50 and it needs 20. Mm -hmm. So I only need 70. Yeah. That's less than 75. You yeah. still up. I just I just bring I bring a pen to closing. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Because you you got 5% yeah. buffer. Right. Yes. And that's what makes it amazing. Yep. Like I have another question. Let's do it. Cuz you got all these doors, 68 doors. Yep. You know, you know, you know I keep up with you on social. Yeah, uh, yeah. What I love about this page is it's, it's it is entertaining as well. I hate someone that just real estate real estate. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He put, he he talks about Atlanta like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. He talks about us like a dog. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me put that out there first. I'm, all, I'm I'm defending us all the time. <laughs> However, I do have a question like 68 doors. Mm -hmm. You got it going on. Do you have a team in for people that are looking to invest, it's like, okay, well, you got five doors. You could be a one-person team. Yep. Now you have 68. Mm -hmm. What are some intricate people on your team that make sure that you maintain this well-oiled machine? Yeah, I'd say the most valuable people on my team are my real estate agent, mm -hmm. my title company, and my property manager. Perfect. Right? Those, are the, those are the three people that really... Why the title the company? Order. Explain that. Yeah, so my title company... Um, has saved me so much money, right? Cost avoidance, um, because as a as an investor, you're making lots of offers, right? Off market deals, and sometimes I might need a title search run before I have a contract to yeah. even put that under mm -hmm. contract, right? And so having a title company that's willing to put that work out there without you having to bring them something like uh, uh, under uh -huh. contract yeah. is huge. And they've saved me tons by running title search and going, hey, some of these titles you need be, to stay away from you, this you one. Have, you have this one's a doozy. One, yeah, this for, one's a doozy. You're buying it for 50, but you're going to be paying 150 yeah. based, on what's on, based on what's on title, right? And so um, having them being able to run title searches for me before I even bring them a contract and then um, a lot of the times clearing these titles can be a big pain in the butt. Oh, they take a, a lot, lot of work. And a lot of these title companies will put the work back on you yep. as, the, as the investor to go ask questions and figure things out. I don't have to worry about none of that. I send them a contract and they take care of everything. They've gone out of their way to come to me if they need to to close. Mm -hmm. I've been out of town, send me documents to, 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 to close overnight. Like it's just, they've saved me so much time and money that they, they're an essential part of my team. So your property manager, you say your realtor, your title company, and your property manager. Yeah. Have this, has this property manager been with you from property one or you had to go? Well, it's my wife, so yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the family yeah. business. So I'm glad you said that, right? Yeah. So you guys had no experience with mm -hmm. managing properties. Right. Like, what are the three steps that you can give our audience to self-manage? Yeah. Because y'all built a property management yeah. business. The first right. thing you need is leverage a, an online system and require your tenants to pay rent through your system, right? There's tons of different systems out there. There's tons of different price points. Some are free, some are yeah. very expensive, some are super expensive. But I quickly realized after I hit about five doors, because when you, when you first start investing, all you want to do is get that rent check. Absolutely. Correct. Wherever you can get it. If Absolutely. I got to come get it, wherever, I'll meet you somewhere to <laughs> exactly. get my money, yeah, right? Yeah. But that gets old when you get to about five. And I, what I was realizing was, like, I had all these extra chores. I now had to go get rent. They come in, one is a check, one is some cash, one is some this. I got to then document it, see if they paid me enough. Do I got to charge them a late fee? Then I got to take all that to the bank, right? Sometimes I'm going to the bank multiple times. And so I said, nah, get you a system. And I put it in my lease that they got to pay rent in my property management system. 
and that's the only way they can pay rent. So that takes care of all those steps for me. So now the money comes in automatically, it automatically goes into my bank account, it automatically tracks if they're late, if they paid enough, I don't have to worry about any of that. Keeps the rent roll for me, right? I didn't have to keep the rent roll on my own. Um, so get you a good property management system and then have uh, like physical systems in place too. The other thing that I learned when, when I was a property, uh, when I was managing my properties in the beginning was when you go to show a vacant property, most people, like man, 10 people will say they're gonna come see it and you'll set the appointment and only five of them show up, mm -hmm. right? And so if you go into that house five different times or 10 different times and only five are showing up, you are wasting a ton of time. So I switched to open house showings. I show them, I pick two days a week when I got an hour or 30 minutes. Yeah. And I say, I'm gonna be there on Saturday from 11.30 to 12, and I'm gonna be there on Tuesday from 5.30 to 6, right? And that's it, and that's when they gotta come. And you learn a lot about people that way too, because it creates a little bit of competition. Yeah. So if they oh, absolutely. show up, they don't wanna show up, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's an old agent's trick. Yeah. We do that, we overlap the appointment. Yep. They're gotta, you have to have Great. a sense of urgency. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. No, that's a gem. Yeah, so it's, it's helped a lot. It's helped a whole lot. Uh, saves me time. And then I don't stay long. I say I'm going to be there for 30 minutes. If they're not there in that 30-minute window, I'm not waiting. I've had people call me, you know, 45 minutes. Hey, you, you, you said you were going to meet me. I said, I'll swim with you between 5.30 and 6. It's, 6. it's 6.35. I'm gone, right? Because I want people that are punctual. And I'm not saying everybody that's late is going to be a bad tenant, but it yeah. could be an indicator. It definitely yeah. can, yeah. especially if you were late with no notice. Right. Right. Yeah. If you and call with nothing. the notice and yeah. say, look, I'm in traffic, whatever, okay. Yeah. Right. Right. But if you just blatantly. It's like they, they can just show up at 630. Up, yeah. yeah. Show up at 630. Sense of entitlemen. Right. And have an and attitude with me. Not people's right. time. Have an attitude with me about it. That's, yeah. Let me know that's probably a tenant I didn't want to deal nah, with. Nah, you don't want to deal with that right. shit. No, this has been a lot of this, information. A lot of information. Arkansas is on the map. Hey, we did, for, listen, <laughs> I, I think I need to go check y'all out. Come on. Yeah. Arkansas is really? on the map. So look, tell the people, well, before we get out of here, right? We, we got to ask you one final question. Yep. We need a rent and we need a gym yep. for our audience. So what's your rent? Oh, man. My rent, well, we kind of talked about my rent, is that not enough people know that the contracting side of this business is probably the most difficult. And if you don't want to get your money took, right, you need to prepare for that on the front side. Uh -huh. Do your due diligence. And one thing we didn't talk about with contractors is you always want to get at least three bids. Get more if you can, and then don't pick the cheapest one. I picked the cheapest one so many times and then spent more money fixing the crap they didn't do right mm -hmm. than I would have if I had just picked, heck, even the most expensive one. Man, mm -hmm. um, so pre prepare yourself about working with contractors um, because contractors will take, you, they'll take you for a run for your money, man. That's a fact. And, and, and it's not that all contractors are bad, right? You just gotta think too, most of these people that have contracting businesses came from being wrench turners mm -hmm. and are now supposed to be business people and yeah. they're just not that good at it yet. Nope. Right? And running a business is different than turning a wrench. Yeah. Right? And so just don't let their lack of business sense cost you your money. Right? Facts. That's that's a that's that, a gym. That's a big gym. That's a gym. That was a rant though. Yeah, a, rant, yeah. but a, that was a rant. A rant that's a gym. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mix. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a hybrid. Yes. Yeah. And so what's your gym? Um I, you know, I've always lived by that, um, you know, imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. And I think uh, mm. too many of us, we want to know all the steps, right? Tons of people want to invest in real estate, but they want to know, all right, this is where I'm going to go find my deals. This is how I'm going to finance them. I got that lined up. Then I know here's all my contractors and then here's all my title. Co like they want it all laid out, start to finish before they take step one. And you never, you, you, very rarely are you gonna have that all laid out, and so you never start. And for me, it's always just been about making the decision. Like, if you just decide you are going to be successful, if you decide it's gonna work, then it'll work. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna open your mind up. Mm -hmm. So when you hit the roadblocks, you're already figuring out, all right, how am I gonna get around those roadblocks? Naturally, you're just doing it, because you already figured out you're gonna be successful, right? And so instead of trying to map out your whole plan from start to finish, start. Learn what a good deal looks like. Learn how you're going to find those good deals. Start there. And I tell once you, once you get a good deal under contract, you know that feeling when you're like, oh, I got one. Absolutely. Right? You go figure out everything else you need to Absolutely. figure out because you right. know you got one, right? So get, get you one first. That's figure the out the rest. Yep. There, Big we, there, there you guys have it, right? There we got it. Look, so tell the people how to find you, your outlets, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. That's the best place to reach me. 
Um, you can go in there and send me a DM. All my links are in, a, in my link tree in there, so you can click the link in my bio. I've got a free book on all that bank financing we were talking about, so people can learn about that. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I never checked yeah. out the free book. You was yeah. too busy talking about Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't talking about Atlanta, folks. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're a fool, you know. There's a free book, free book in there for you. I, I love she this page. She said something about her ATM. Yeah, I, I, nah, I love this page. I, I'm, always, I'm always defending us in there. If you know something common or nothing else, as soon as you say something about Atlanta. <laughs> no, no, no. I love your page. It's, um, it, it, it's all factual. It, it, it makes people want to think. Yeah. And also, you provide valuable information, and, Absolutely. and you and you stand strong in your stance about That's investing right. in real estate as a vehicle to build generational wealth. That's right. And we love to see it. Thank you. Look, we love this, man. We learned something about a new market that yeah. people are not talking about. That's right. Um, but I guarantee you, after this, people are gonna be talking about <laughs> this because yeah. this was a lot of information, and um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Go follow my guy Henry. Um, but we're about to end this episode. Oh, my yeah. name is Matt Garland. In the MLS number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And my name is Kiana Watson, broker extraordinaire, license number 317576. And thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Rants and Gems show. Like, comment, share, subscribe, <laughs> tell your community. We out of here. Go follow Henry. Yes. Peace. Thank you all. <laughs>